Hey what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a slasher thriller film. See No Evil, Part 2. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Following the butcher Jacob's horrific murder spree at the Blackwell Hotel from the first episode, the film begins with more workers named Amy and Seth. Amy delivers a burned victim with a plastic mask to cover the burns, which Seth removes before dissecting the corpse. Amy prepares to leave her job when Seth surprises her with a birthday cake as a present. Amy asks Seth to come to her birthday celebration, but he refuses as he and their boss work the graveyard shift. While Amy prepares to leave to meet her friends at a bar, the boss receives a call, informing them that nine bodies from the Blackwell Hotel murder are being delivered. So Amy decides to cancel her plans and help her colleagues with the corpses. Meanwhile, the paramedics reluctantly attempt to revive Jacob, the butcher from the first film, but in the end, he still loses his life. Amy and Seth take charge of the bodies, including Jacob's. After helping Seth move Jacob's corpse to a room, Amy leaves to return to her boss. While walking down the hallway, Amy hears someone calling her, so she follows the voice, leading to a room full of corpses covered with white linen. She is searching for her boss when someone suddenly touches her. Her scream of shock and fear cues her friends to reveal the surprise. The boss then comes out, indicating that he has allowed Amy's friends to throw a birthday party for her in the morgue. Although she didn't expect it, Amy cannot hide her happiness upon seeing her brother on her birthday, along with her friends, Ladybro, Flirty, and her boyfriend. Amy knows it was Flirty's idea to celebrate in the morgue because Flirty is fascinated by death and serial killers. Just seconds later, Seth enters the room, so Amy introduces him to everyone, including her brother, who immediately senses that Seth is attracted to his sister. While everyone's busy socializing, the brother approaches Seth and bluntly tells him that Amy likes him too. Despite knowing that his sister likes Seth, the brother tries to stop him by telling him that Amy deserves better than him. Seth is not dumb to know that Amy's brother belittles him because of his job, so to avoid any conflict, Seth returns to working on preparing the bodies for autopsy, leaving the birthday party. Meanwhile, Flirty sits on the boss lap and flirts with him while asking about Jacob and the Blackwell Hotel murder incident. The boss shares that Amy and Seth took care of the nine bodies, including Jacob's. Flirty cannot hide her excitement upon hearing that Jacob's corpse is downstairs, so Flirty excuses herself to the bathroom as her boyfriend comes along. Meanwhile, Amy confronts her brother after seeing Seth leave the party. The brother reasons out that he was just trying to look out for her, but Amy angrily replies that she doesn't need him and his overprotectiveness. Amy feels offended because her brother and their mom disapprove of the life and career she chose, but she's an independent woman and knows what's best for her. The brother tries to go after Amy, but Lady Bro stops him and tells him to give Amy some time. On the other hand, Flirty and her boyfriend enter the morgue. Flirty immediately unbuttons her smelly top and removes the linen covering Jacob's corpse. She's excited to see the Blackwell Hotel serial killer face to face. Despite his comments that it's not a good idea, Flirty sits on top of Jacob and stares at his face while telling her boyfriend Jacob's story. Flirty knows that Jacob's mother was a crazy fundamentalist religious nutcase who regularly kept Jacob locked in a cage and tortured him during religious ceremonies. Consequently, Jacob is transformed into a psychopathic serial killer who murders people to death because of their sins. Flirty then taunts Jacob that he's dead now before putting her lips on him, pissing her boyfriend off. She finally shuts his mouth up with her tongue and performs a hormone yoga with him. On the other hand, Lady Bro tries to make a pass on Amy's brother, but he distances himself and explains that he sees her as a sister. Nevertheless, since she's under the influence of alcohol, Lady Bro grabs him and tongue massages him. At the same time, Flirty and her boyfriend do not even bother to lower their moans of pleasure. However, Flirty notices that Jacob's body has suddenly vanished, possibly getting sick of their hormone noises, so she stops moving on top of her boyfriend, despite his disapproval. He tells her it's probably their friends messing around, but it doesn't make sense. It's not possible that they could have moved Jacob's body elsewhere. Just then, the lights go out and all that is left is pitch darkness. Flirty lights some matches to see in the dark. However, they see something unexpected. Flirty slowly turns around as she feels someone standing behind them, and the next thing she knows, Jacob suddenly grabs Flirty's boyfriend. Despite the pitch blackness, Flirty manages to exit the room, not minding the blood stains on her clothes. Meanwhile, Jacob finds his mother's body in one of the freezers, and seeing her brings back the memories. Once again, although she's already dead, the mother still plays in Jacob's mind. He stares at Flirty's boyfriend angrily, before saying he sees his sins and grabbing him by the neck. On the other hand, while searching for Seth, Amy finds her brother and Lady Bro going intimate in the hallway. At this time, Jacob covers his face with the burnt victim's mask to hide his eye. 
He then takes his time picking the perfect torture tool to kill. The boss faintly hears flirty screams of fear at this time, so he follows the sound. At the same time, Ladybro and Amy's brother stop their hormone yoga after hearing Flirty's screams. Although they think Flirty is just messing around with them, they check it out to make sure everything is alright. On the other hand, the boss senses someone behind him. As he turns around, he immediately screams for help. He quickly moves his wheelchair to escape Jacob, who whips his chains with a hook. The boss gets thrown from his wheelchair because of this, so he desperately crawls. But soon after that, he notices that he's having a hard time moving. The boss realizes that Jacob's hook is pierced onto his right foot. Despite trying his best to escape, Jacob still captures the boss. They hear his screams, so they worriedly check it out. They check the runes and discover that Jacob's body has disappeared. The morgue is in a mess. They also notice blood on one of the freezers, so they open it and find the severely injured corpse of Flirty's boyfriend. Suddenly, the power goes out, but fortunately, there are emergency lights. Using her brother's lighter, Amy finds the flashlight and they start to look for the rest of their friends. Meanwhile, Seth also looks for them, completely unaware of the killings. While looking for a way out, Amy discovers a severely wounded boss lying on the cold floor. He's still alive, but unfortunately, he stops breathing seconds later, leaving Amy devastated. Amy calms herself before returning to her brother to look for their friends. On the other hand, Seth finds the power supply burnt like someone intentionally wanted it to be that way. Fortunately, they run into a terrified Flirty. Still in a panic, Flirty informs them that Jacob had killed her boyfriend. They try to deny the possibility, but Flirty firmly stands on her point and points out that Jacob possibly faked his death so he would not go to jail. Flirty also tells them that she and her boyfriend might awaken and piss off Jacob with their loud hormone noises. Although Amy is panicking, she remains calm to find Seth and the exit. On the other hand, while still searching for Amy and the rest, Seth finds Jacob standing before him. He immediately dodges Jacob's attacks and runs away. At this time, Amy and the rest climb upstairs to get to the exit when they realize the security door is locked. While Amy thinks of another way, Seth suddenly appears behind the door and with their encouragement, Seth successfully unlocks the door before Jacob catches up to him and kills him. Now all together, they realize that Flirty is not kidding about Jacob actually being alive. Just then, Jacob suddenly grabs Seth by breaking the glass. While Lady Bro runs away in panic and fear, the brother helps Seth escape Jacob's grass before running downstairs first to hide. However, as Jacob breaks down the security door, Amy and her brother accidentally part ways with Flirty and Seth. The two soon find a hiding spot, but they get into a heated argument as Amy thinks that her brother purposely left their friends because he's a coward and selfish. He rebuts that he will not sacrifice either of them for the sake of their friends' lives. On the other hand, Lady Bro ends up in the bathroom, where Jacob attacks and strangles her. Lady Bro tries to escape, but she soon spits up blood when Jacob tightens his hands around her, crashing her bones and organs. Jacob lets go of her as memories of his mother come flashing back. Jacob attempts to fight back the urge to kill, prompting Lady Bro to thank God for Jacob's hesitation. However, this triggers more memories of Jacob's mother, prompting Jacob to ask Lady Bro, why would God help you? Jacob insults Lady Bro by calling her a dirty war and adds that he sees the sin in her. He watches and patiently waits as she slowly dies from her injuries. On the other hand, Flirty and Seth find some of the exits obstructed with chains. Almost all doors are locked as well, but fortunately, they find one that is not. Seth hides Flirty behind the supply trolley while he hides underneath the metal table. They soon hear Jacob entering the room, and the fear intensifies upon seeing him holding a knife with zigzag blades. At this time, Amy and her brother duck down upon seeing Jacob in the other room. There's a mirror connecting the rooms, and Jacob is one meter away from any of them. Flirty shakes uncontrollably as she tries to keep silent when Jacob approaches her spot. However, Jacob bows his head a little and stares Flirty in the eyes. Just then, Amy calls Jacob, diverting his attention to her instead of Flirty. Seth immediately instructs Flirty to run, which she does. However, she's just a few steps away from the door, when Jacob turns around and swipes the knife in the air, cutting Flirty's chick neck. Amy can only watch as Flirty slowly falls, and soon stops breathing. The brother quickly breaks the glass, cueing Seth to come out of his hiding spot and get together with them. He lets Amy and Seth lead first, before exiting when Jacob catches up to them and lifts the brother in the air, strangling him. Amy refuses to leave her brother alone, but her brother repeatedly instructs her to leave. With Seth's help, she escapes Jacob. As they leave, the brother stabs Jacob in the neck with a scalpel he had found, but Jacob breaks his arm and uses it to stab him. Meanwhile, Amy and Seth find Ladybro strapped onto one of the exit doors. 
This prompts Amy to break the glass near her to get the axe and help her brother. Left with no choice, Seth comes along to help her. They follow the brother's screams of pain, leading to the previous room, where Amy's friends surprised her. They find the brother strapped to the metal table, and when Amy removes the duct tape from his mouth, he yells to them to run. This signals Jacob to see him from underneath, using an electric knife. As the brother dies, Jacob pushes the table off of him. Devastated and in agony with what she has just witnessed, Amy attacks Jacob with the axe. Jacob effortlessly steals it from her. Jacob then prepares to kill her with the electric knife when Seth pushes Amy away, causing him to be to one wounded. Before Jacob kills them both, Amy and Seth escape the room. Amy takes Seth into a room to cauterize his wound, and there, she reveals that she dropped out of medical school when she realized the inevitability of death and how people would end up in the morgue. They then notice one of the windows that leads to the ground level. So Seth gives her his car keys, and Amy kisses him for the first time, but without using her tongue. She then squeezes out to get help. Halfway through, she sees Jacob in the parking lot, prompting her to retreat back inside. They hide and wait until Jacob leaves, before finding another way out. Amy leads Seth because he's slow and weak from his wound. However, Jacob impales her to death as she attempts to unlock a side exit door. Although he still wants some tongue massage, Seth has no choice but to leave Amy's corpse. Seth runs away from Jacob and hides in one of the rooms, where he cries his agony and grief. Not long after, Jacob barges into the room, and Seth charges at him. However, Jacob is evidently stronger and bigger than him, so Seth gets thrown and slammed onto the walls and tables. As Jacob prepares to end his life, Seth taunts him by saying that he's not tough as he thinks he is. Seth then impales Jacob with a nozzle from the piece of embalming equipment and pumps his body full of embalming chemicals thanks to the generator, seemingly killing Jacob. After watching him drop dead on the ground, Seth returns to Amy and holds her in his arms for one last time, regretting that he didn't let go of his hormones with her earlier. After that, he escapes the morgue through a broken window and drives away in his car. He gets out of the car to open the gated entrance when he realizes something. The backseat door is open, meaning that Jacob is alive and in the car with him as well. As he refuses to believe it, Jacob attacks Seth from behind and gouges his eyes out. The film ends with the final shots of each of them murdered to death before the last close-up of Jacob's face as he says, I see it now, probably referring to their sins. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.